Good morning and welcome to our webinar. We are from Wilmac Technologies. I'm specifically Emily Miller, the Director of Marketing. Thank you for joining us for our webinar this morning. The webinar itself is titled Breaking Free from Spreadsheet Scheduling Struggles, Five Workforce Management Challenges Solved. So essentially, before I get started and pass it over to our speakers for the day, I want to start with a few logistics and housekeeping items. First, that everyone has been muted on this webinar, so um, you won't be able to, to speak throughout it. Second to that, though, um, you can insert any questions that you may have on the side of your screen. Uh, we might not necessarily be able to get, this, get to them today, but we will make sure to follow up with you afterwards if we don't. Last thing on the housekeeping side of things is this uh, webinar is being recorded, so we will have it available afterwards for you to rewatch if you miss anything or want to learn something again. And we will also be sharing it on our biweekly podcast called The Will Mac Wire. So those links will be shared to everyone afterwards. Now, the premise of this webinar is, is exciting for us just because it's come up through a lot of customer conversations over the past three months, past few months. Um, we've heard you and we hear the challenges that you're struggling with when it comes to workforce wellness, to employee satisfaction and retention, and ultimately how scheduling has become a very time consuming thing for you to do every day. So it aligns well with something in one of our other practice groups, specifically called workforce management. So John and Charlie, our speakers for the day, uh, will be diving into specific challenges that you've brought up or that we see you facing within that space and how a more comprehensive automated scheduling solution can can solve those issues. So uh, I'm going to pass over to John and Charlie now. So John McDonald is our first speaker. He is our public safety sales director. I'm sure many of you recognize his face. And then our second speaker is Charlie Snedden, a sales engineer at Wilmac Technologies. So John, Charlie, I'm going to pass it over to you now. Thanks, Emily. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to sit down with us for our workforce management webinar. As Emily mentioned, my name is John McDonald. I'm the Public Safety Sales Director here at Wilmac. I have the privilege of working with many of you on the call today in the call recording world, but uh, we also work with many emergency service agencies throughout Ontario, Canada, and the Northeast uh, U.S. Also, Charlie Snedden joining me. Thanks, John. Yeah, Charlie Snedden. Uh, I'm fairly new to the Wilmac team, so I may have not had the uh, possibility to meet any of you um, in, in, the, in the past, but uh, I come to Wilmac with a wealth of workforce management knowledge. I first started in the WFM arena uh, back in 1999, so you can imagine I've used many products. Uh, I've been in various uh, industries, verticals, um, and more recently back in the UK, where uh, I'm originally from, I was working with police forces to implement uh, WFM in the emergency rooms. Perfect. So we're going to lean on Charlie's knowledge of WFM and, and the public safety world a little bit today. And uh, we're going to jump right in. So so one of the number one conversations that we have in public safety market revolves around employee retention, workforce wellness, and with that sort of employee burnout and their work routines and ultimately coming down to scheduling. And scheduling is not just their calendars necessarily, but their break requests, their time off requests, notifying you, the supervisor, the director about kind of what's going on outside of their work life. Uh, that's going to directly impact their day-to-day -day in the center. And the number one method of scheduling that we hear is outdated Excel calendars. Um, so some are very complicated, some are very outdated, and just about all of them are fairly clunky and not interactive in the sense that the telecommunicator can't really take part in the process of their day-to-day, -day, right? They usually send you their schedule, you fill it out, and that's kind of all said and done. Um, we usually see time off requests or break requests done manually outside of the solution as in a conversation or filling out a piece of paper to hand to you. So it all seems very manual and not interactive. So, Charlie, I'm going to jump right in. First question. You have a ton of experience in the WFM world in public safety agencies. What are some of the biggest challenges that you've seen agencies deal with when it comes to adjusting shifts or tracking employee met employee hours in Excel sheets. And I, I think you, you've pretty much touched on everything there when we talk about outdated uh, scheduling methods. And, and we don't just mean Excel, you know. Um, outdated scheduling methods could be a diary, uh, an Outlook calendar, something that isn't dynamic. And I think that's the key thing. You, you talked about being able to change breaks or lunches or, you know, manipulate shifts uh, within the environment. 
And I think you know, when it comes to public safety, timing um, and the staffing of, of um, uh, the timing of staff, sorry, is, is critical. And I think the traditional scheduling methods, which could be an Excel spreadsheet, it could be an Excel spreadsheet with macros and VBA in there, uh, do have some limitations. Um, and some of those limitations could be the, the interval that people are being scheduled to. So historically, WFM tools have scheduled to a 15 minute interval, a quarter of an hour, um, I would say back, uh, back home in the UK. But, um, we can now have, uh, advanced WFM tools that can schedule from one minute to five minutes. So giving you more kind of, um, uh, an interval basis of that scheduling. And I think one of the key things as well, you know, scheduling methods with regards to public safety may have originally developed through following shifts of other users. So I'm going to use the, the emergency room again, um, 911 type thing. Back home in the UK, we would schedule by blocks or platoons, which meant the people who were taking the calls were on the same shifts of the uh, officers that were out on the street in the beat. And that did have its advantages, uh, but now what we're seeing is that uh, call handlers are looking for a better work-life balance. They don't always want to start at 7 in the morning or 7 at night and do an overnight shift. They want to be able to do more, I would say, traditional shifts like a 9 till 5, 11 till 2s, 10 till 3s, that type of thing. And that's where these traditional methods of uh, Outlook calendars, WFM um, Excel spreadsheets begin to fail. They can't schedule down to the 15 minutes. Or if they can, it's very time consuming to update, uh, but also um, offering different shifts. Uh, so it makes it easier for the, the contact center to look at these different shifts. And then we can uh, allow for real time adjustments based on call volumes. And I'm not saying we would forecast the emergency call volumes. Uh, we should look at the non-emergency line, something that has a pattern and something that allows us to schedule against. And that allows us then to to be able to quickly move um, those non-emergency call handlers into, say, a, a dispatch area whereby somebody may have called in sick or they've been taken off shift due to some other reasons. Yeah, I think something that we, we've talked about in the past, Charlie, that goes along with that is the flexibility of those schedules. So, you know, telecommunicators don't they, – they have a life outside of work. So sometimes last-minute changes pop up. Maybe they have a sick kid at home. Uh, yeah. that home emergency or, or kind of like an unforeseen need that pops up and having that ability to be flexible in a, in a interactive solution versus a Excel sheet or a diary, like you're saying, um, yeah. it, it allows for flexibility, which is then going to prevent, prevent. For sure. Yeah. Out, right? The manual scheduling does have some serious limitations in there. Um, and the great thing about modern WFM tools is that they, you kind of touched on, it helps automate that process. So it automates the, the breaks and lunches that maybe supervisors were manually scheduling and manually having to move when, when things weren't going to, to plan. But it's the ancillary kind of product or um, activities outside of that. Uh, you talked about vacation, holiday requests, uh, any type of time off request really is, is difficult to manage in an Excel spreadsheet or some other traditional method. It could even just be a notepad um, at the end of the desk. <clears throat> but right. by automating the processes, it, it does uh, also dramatically uh, reduce the number of errors or inefficiencies um, in the, the call taking side. Yeah, so so maybe that's a good segue, Charlie. Um, when we are doing this manual calendars, this manual scheduling, these are susceptible to manual mistakes, right? Maybe you could fat mm. finger or you can, could misread a, a schedule. And not only that, but for our supervisors and our dispatchers, setting up these schedules manually take a ton of time, right? Um, they do, yeah. yeah. So, so you mentioned a little bit, but in a modern workforce management solution, is, is there anything you can expand on that really helps address the manual errors in these uh, inefficiencies within Excel or, or manual I think so. schedule? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. So, you know, if, if you imagine a, a supervisor uh, creating a spreadsheet, they have all these rules in their head. Um, you know, it could be strict policies, including like mandated rest or uh, shift overlaps to ensure that there's a handover during shift change. Um, and, you know, making sure that the coverage of the, the lines or the desks are, are fully there. So a supervisor has to have all that knowledge um, and be able to apply it to the manually scheduling capabilities. But if you think of WFM as a rules engine, 
It can take sophisticated rules with regards to the mandated rest periods, holiday allowances, when people can book holidays, and, and more recently, uh, using tools like AI to to measure fatigue in a call taker. Um, these 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 WFM tools are are adapting and making it easier for supervisors to take all that knowledge that they had throw it into the the rules engine and be able to produce schedules and manipulate and alter those schedules so much more quickly than they would have had to, uh, would have been able to do in the past. Yeah, and I think with that, the the, the policy for these breaks is is important, but I think what's also really important is the personnel here. Mm. These these folks live in a high-stress world. If, If they need a break, having the ability to be flexible saying, you know, I just had a really rough call. I need, I need a cup of coffee. I need a break. Having the ability to, to do that while also following these policies and procedures, um, you know, it, it's a win-win. It really helps on the workforce wellness and preventing burnout. It does. And, that, and that's something I've seen more uh, and more with regards to workforce management tools. I was working with an organization just a couple of weeks ago. Um, they were based out of Australia. They link into an AI tool which looks at fatigue, as, as I mentioned before. And, and fatigue could come in many different forms. Uh, but, uh, you know, in high stress situations, uh, it could be just taking a single call, could be the, the make or break of, of that individual for that day. These tools, these AI tools, which can look at fatigue and, and other stress uh, levels, uh, understand the history of that person, what calls, how many calls, whether or not they've been on shift or the last four nights have been a night shift. And it can balance that into the equation, if you will, um, and determine how fatigued that that individual is. So wellness is a really important part of workforce management, whereby it can look at these numbers, the fatigue numbers or stress numbers, and then begin to automatically schedule additional breaks. So the, the, the call handler isn't always on the phone. Um, and that makes it easier as well because it's quite simple um, and easy to, to not notice something that's happening with your call takers if you're focusing on another um, high stressful job that's come in. So the tools allow um, people to, I wouldn't say take a back seat because, you know, we still need to be engaged with the WFM tool, but they are allowed to look at other things and maybe focus more on the wellness of the call handlers. Yeah, and I think that's a good a good. I want to expand on that a little bit more. So, when when we're talking to uh, PCFs all over the Northeast U.S. and Ontario, we were kind of hearing the same thing um, that their seats are not filled to to capacity. They don't have a hundred percent heads um, in in the call floor. So we're, we're usually hearing you know forty percent seats filled, fifty, sixty, uh, but rarely do we ever hear that every seat is filled. And when we're dealing with an understaffed floor, how do we best set up our team for success? How do we not burn them out? And how do we make sure that the floor is operating to the best ability? So how are we getting 100% operation out of 60%? So I know you've you've ran into this in, in a previous life. How do agencies that struggle to predict staffing needs, how do they struggle to predict what they actually are going to have capacity for? And how does that kind of impact their operations? Yeah, and I think you know what you're what you're describing there is doing more with less, um, and that's where my history, uh, history comes from with workforce management. It was doing more with less, and I think you know when it comes to to PSAP emergency centres um, and a- anybody where there's this other line um, of emergency calls, it, it, it's a lot easier to deal with that. So in my experience, what we would probably have done or, or do is look at the non-emergency calls first. So you have this pool of staff who are taking the non-emergency calls um, and that's easier to forecast. Uh, I'm not saying that we should be forecasting emergency calls, but at least on the emergency side or the dispatch side, there's a number of desks and typically those desks need to be filled 100% of the time. So you've got this pool of of uh, call takers uh, and you want to ensure that they're rotated around the desks so they've got you know essential time off um, with regards to taking the calls and and to do that we look at the WFM tool and the WFM tool takes all of the the considerations that we have so you have one part of the business that needs to be managed or staffed 100% of the time and then you've got your other part where you've got that that 60% reduction you were talking about previously it's very difficult to to manage that the WFM tools allows you to visually see what's happening with that 60% staff. You know, where is your peaks and troughs in the call volume? Where is your highs and lows in the ability to answer calls within, you know, 
X number of seconds. The tool allows you to see that, but also allows you to uh, be more predictive or proactive when it comes to scheduling those other desks as well. So if you know that somebody's coming up for a relief break, you can automatically schedule, move, or shift somebody from the non-emergency side over into the, the dispatch, uh, allowing them to, to cover those desks. Uh, it does it much quicker than, say, a supervisor does. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, it, it doesn't need the supervisor to be you know, managing that part of the, the, the job all the time. Right, right. Yeah, as, as supervisors or directors, I'm sure a lot of the folks on this call have a good idea of, of who their folks are, who, their strengths, their weaknesses. But using WFM to take in real data, real call volume, look at metadata and, and really understand how the center operates. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and you, you talk about strengths and weaknesses. And, and for me, uh, in a WFM environment, that would be what I would refer to as skills. You know, people have skills um, and those could be uh, administrative tasks. They could be following up on on calls for, you know, road um, uh, closures, that type of thing. They may be able to operate in that space quite quickly. But if you're starting to, to take non-emergency calls and there's more and more skills or more and more um, uh, abilities that are required, it's then more difficult for um, a supervisor or a director to understand exactly what everybody's strengths and weaknesses are. And I guess there's a, a kind of focal point because some people go, oh, workforce management is for, you know, call centers of hundreds and hundreds of staff. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's, it's not. No, it's, um, you can have well, my smallest contact center was 12 agents and they got a huge um, uh, assistance from WFM tools because it was so much more difficult to manage the tea breaks and, and lunches for those 12 staff and ensure that coverage was there all the time than it than, um in an Excel spreadsheet than it was in, in WFM. So it does improve the, the working capability. Yeah, exactly. And I think that ultimately comes down to your workforce wellness, like we've touched on a couple of times. But but diving into into that workforce wellness a little bit, we know, as we mentioned, we may not be fully staffed at 100%. How mm-hmm. do we keep our 60% or our 50% of the folks we have operating at their highest efficiency will also allow allowing flexibility for the work-life balance and to make sure that they aren't getting burned out. We know that these jobs are high pressure. This is a very stressful environment, and they, these folks also have lives outside of the center. Um, so how can how have you seen kind of the lack of effective scheduling contribute to telecommunicator workforce burnout? Yeah, so you know, burnout is it's significant in in any industry, um, and it appears to be, for me in my experience, more and more often uh, within the call taker environment. Uh, they're having um, you know constant pressure, um, which has you know an emotional toll um, on on them, and ensuring that the call takers get adequate rest and recovery is is kind of vital to maintain mm-hmm. their mental and physical health, and and that could be in a number of ways, you know. Um, uh, coming off of a night shift and going on to a day shift has an adverse effect on on people's um, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Not morale, but their well-being. But well-being, um, but uh, their performance, I, I guess. You know, you'd, so uh, uh, maybe you've done it in the past where you've come off a night shift and then you, you have a day's rest. A day doesn't seem enough to reset. And that's where we can look at WFM tools and we can we can plan or we can forecast or we can simulate what would happen if we gave them three days off between a night shift and a day shift. Um, so when we talk about, you know, the, the rest and recovery, we're not only discussing what's happening on shift with tea breaks and lunches. We could also be looking at those days off, those rest days, um, RDOs, rest days off or um, um you know, the scheduled days off, that type of thing. And for me, that's when that, that's moving away from probably those traditional staffing uh, methods that we taught before, where it might be days, afternoons and nights. And it's a rotation of, you know, five days on, three days on, four days on, that type of thing. And the WFM tool allows you to build those in, plan them and see what happens in the future, not only for the agent's um, rest and recovery, but for the, the call taker's ability within the call center. Uh, how many calls are they taking per day, that type of thing. And I think it's key to, to understand as well that WFM on its own is a great tool. But if you were to then begin to apply that with say, an analytics package, 
you get a whole different view of the, the data. And that data then becomes more powerful to the supervisors and they're able to look at the rest and recovery of their call handlers within within the business. Right. Yeah. And, and, and when a telecommunicator struggles to manage their stress and their workload, it can often lead to issues of potentially looking for another job uh, at a similar PSAP or a different PSAP somewhere local. Uh, but, you know, it, it really all comes down to scheduling on the floor and employee retention, ultimately, I think. Um, having your team set up for success, if you can keep them in the seats longer, the, the you know, the better that, that they'll be for it. Um, yeah. it. It supports the well-being of the entire workforce, um, and it helps uh, prevent the burnout and ensuring that the, the uh, telecommunicators remain effective in their role for the long term. And, and yeah. that's what we're looking for. You know, we, we want to ensure that they're, they're firstly good at what they do, but also that we as an organization are looking after them because they will essentially look after us in the long term. Right, right. So, so with kind of that wellness, the workforce wellness, that the poor work-life balance, how can scheduling methods or WFM methods directly impact employee retention? Or what have you seen in the past that, you know, you put in WFM and it directly helps kind of the bottom line of the, of the center of employee retention? Yeah, it's actually a, a really good question because the employee retention and satisfaction, um, for me, you know, up until about 10 years ago, wasn't really a concern. Um, you know, I worked in situations where uh, a call taker was given their schedule. That was their tea break. That was their lunch. And, and that's all they had. Um and it was it become more sophisticated with regards to WFM tool. I uh, deployed a tool uh, back in the UK for a, a TV, a cable TV company, and um, they had never scheduled the tea breaks and lunches like this in the past. And there was two call handlers, and for the last say five, you know, six years, they had always went on the same tea break on the same lunch together. Um, but you know, putting in these these automatic tools gave them tea breaks and lunches, and uh, for for them. That was not great. It wasn't a great story because they were now separated. They weren't able to go on their tea breaks and lunches together and they were not satisfied. However, the tool allowed us to implement swapping of shifts, but also swapping of tea breaks and lunches. And that's when we talk about satisfaction because it allows the, the call handlers to be more um uh, in control over their schedules. And I think control of their schedules, um, you know, can significantly reduce stress because they're not stressed about not having their break when they used to have it all the time. Um, I think the, the same could also be um, uh, conversely said. Uh, again, I worked in a, a, a call center where um, they were taking bookings for, for holidays. However, there, there was this married couple who wanted to ensure that they were never on the same shift because they, they had their kids back at home, so they needed to do the kid coverage. Um, and sometimes, you know, manual scheduling, when people didn't actually know that individual rule, they would be scheduled on the same shift. And then they'd have to go through the process of changing it, or, you know, speaking to a supervisor, supervisor has to reschedule, move things around, that type of thing. And it just didn't impact them, it impacted the people around them, because they were having to change shifts and tea breaks and lunches all, all the way through. Whereas if you build that into a rule or a policy within the WFM tool, it's always met. It will never break that rule. Um, and that uh, allows the, the, the call handlers to, to ensure that their um, preferences are met um, and it gives them a level of autonomy that, that helps, uh, I guess, improve you know, morale and job satisfaction. Absolutely. Absolutely. So so that kind of brings us to the to the end of uh, our discussion. Charlie, was there anything else that you wanted to touch on that, that you think we may not have covered? I think one of the other key things that I haven't really kind of mentioned here is the, the real time side of things. Um, real time within WFM allows us to see exactly what's happening right here and now. And, and that can be managed quite well in a, in a reasonably small organization. But if you're talking about having different sites, different locations, um, you know, multiple, multiple call handlers, then that becomes awkward. Um, and the real time tools within WFM allows you to see everything that's going on. Um, and uh, that also applies to what we were just talking about with regards to tea breaks and lunches, because if somebody was not to take their tea break or lunch at the correct time, that has a knock on effect or an adverse effect to the other call handlers, tea breaks and lunches. Um, but using the, the swapping in real time, uh, it takes any, any of those problems away. So really just giving, 
even more flexibility to your team. If if I need something now, that I have the ability to possibly switch out with somebody. Yeah, that I, I, absolutely it allows things to happen here and now. Whereas if you were on an Excel spreadsheet, you would do it in the here and now, but you wouldn't adjust or amend the Excel spreadsheet, and everything would just be the same. Um, and I think that also reflects on reporting. Um, WFM has a, a wide and varied amount of reporting tools and reporting metrics that allows uh, PSAPs and call centers to, to understand what actually happened, take that information, and then use it for the future going forward. Perfect. Well, thanks for that, Charlie. I hope this helps everyone on the webinar today understand WFM a, a little bit better. I know this is a new solution set for a lot of PSAPs. But clearly, there's some really great benefits to moving off dated spreadsheets or older diaries or calendars uh, to a WFM solution. It's really all about promoting telecommunicator wellness, flexibility, while also getting the best out of your current workforce. Um, obviously, it can, it can assist with scheduling and, more, more importantly, potentially predictive scheduling, really to ensure that you have full seats at all times. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out if you guys have any questions. Um, if you want to talk more about your act center's actual processes and how a WFM solution might fit into your center, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'll, re I'll follow up with um, everyone on the call individually, but uh, I just wanted to throw that out there. I believe we have a couple minutes for some Q&A. Uh, I think we got yeah, some. I did see a couple of questions come in while yeah. we were talking. Yep. Okay. Um, so, Charlie, first one is for you, of course. Um <laughs> So I think you, you touched on it a little bit, but does the solution show interval staffing? So kind of can you break down your 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 schedules into different minute breaks? So 15, 30? The, the time periods, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the, 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 um, the, the more kind of modern workforce management tools now allow you to schedule up to the minute. Um, and where that's important is when we're looking at things like social media feeds, um, chat messages, that type of thing. Um, the, the kind of social element within WFM uh, drove WFM tools to schedule down to the minute. As I mentioned, I think earlier on, traditionally, they were about 15 minutes or half hours. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, I see call centers or contact centers using uh, spreadsheets, and that would be to the hour. Uh, so not giving you the granularity of those 15 minutes um, intervals. And the key thing there is it does give you that staffing. Um, we were just talking about breaks. So if you were to move somebody's break by 15 minutes, the, the impact is immediate. You can see that visually uh, within the tool. But, yes, you can schedule, um, in my experience, anywhere from a minute up to an hour. It just depends on the platform and the historical data that you're feeding into it. Okay. Uh, another one for you, and this is, I feel like, a conversation that we've had a couple times. Can the solution schedule multiple shift layers? So. The, the folks who wrote this one, they have a 12-hour component and an eight-and-a-half-hour component. So everyone obviously does scheduling a little differently. So they might have a day, afternoons, nights. They might have a block scheduling, 12, eight-and-a-half, four, seven, whatever it is. Can a WFM solution um, schedule multiple block schedules or multiple shift layers? I, I absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the, the great thing about that is that it, it doesn't, doesn't just do it for an individual over a period of time. You could actually have those different layers in an entire week. So from one day, you might have a, an eight-hour shift. The following day, you might only have a four-hour shift, depending on your, your working hours. Uh, you know, you, you as an individual, as a, as a call taker, as telecommunicator, you may only have 20 hours of employment for that entire week. And that can be broken down over, over different variables. Again, it's the rules engine. It's the policies that are in place. It depends on the organization. Uh, have seen um, uh, outsourcers or BPOs scheduling people for an individual hour, depending on the contract that they've got. So, yes, we can, we can go all the way from an hour uh, up to 12, you know, 13 hours, um, uh, taking that into consideration. And then similarly, Again, talking about well-being, it ensures that the break between those shifts uh, right. is 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 met as well. So there might be like a, a rule that says uh, 11 hours between shifts, or if they they finish their shift after a certain time, they can't start their next shift on the next day before a certain time. So yeah, all that can be done. Right. Awesome. So last question for you: Does the WFM solution do scheduled breaks for dispatch desks? that subtract from call taker number? Do you get that one? I th yeah. So, so, so I would, I would consider that as like a, a relief option. 
Um, so you've got your dispatch desk, uh, desks that need to be manned 100% of the time. So if one of those dispatchers goes on tea break, it can schedule somebody from a relief shift uh, into that tea break. Um, so it's taking that desk. Now, that could just be the coverage for that, that interval, or maybe that relief worker can be scheduled for two hours on that desk. So it really depends, again, on the policy. But I, absolutely, I've seen that successfully work in, in many applications uh, for, for WFM. Great. So, so that's, uh, that's all the questions that we have right now. Anything that came in, we'll try to follow up with everybody individually. Again, feel free to shoot over any questions or contact Charlie or I. Um, and uh, I'll turn it back to Emily. Cheers, John. Thanks, Charlie. Perfect. Thank you, guys. And like John said, um, any questions that you all submitted throughout the session today, we were able to get to a couple of them. Uh, John will, and Charlie will make sure to review those in depth afterwards and, and get back to you individually. So thank you all for joining us for the webinar this morning, uh, Breaking Free from Spreadsheet Scheduling Struggles, Five Workforce Management Challenges Solved. Uh, John and Charlie covered a lot of great stuff. Again, I'll mention that this will be available as a recording afterwards. We're going to put together a nice uh, text summary, too, that you can browse through. And this will air on our biweekly podcast, The Wilmac Wire, in the coming weeks. So thank you all for joining us this morning and have a great rest of your day.